type. I'm the bad guy. Duh. Hello, everybody, and I am back here in the fandom car. It is the most earth-breaking, ground-shaking, but never media show money-taking. The man, the myth, the legend, the most electrifying villain in YouTube entertainment today, Mr. General Zod. Howdy. And actually, I should have worn the Dave Filoni hat for the Clone Wars. You know what? For you guys, next Clone Wars episode, I'm wearing a cowboy hat. But for today, General Zod is out and about, and I'm here to bring you another stellar review. This review is going to be on a movie that will change your life. This is on one of the greatest Horror masterpieces of <laughs> oh, I'm here to talk to you all about the worst. How this movie got a sequel, I have no clue. But I'm going to do two movies in one because in order to properly review this, you need the context to why this movie is actually terrible than the original. And that is for Brahms the Boy um, 2. Now, The Boy 1, let, let me just give you some backstory. The Boy 1 was a surprising hit. It starred Lauren Cohen. Uh, if you don't know who she is, I'm a fan of The Walking Dead. She plays Maggie. She does a stellar job in this. And this movie was mixed critically because of the fact of the ending. Now, the gist of the first movie, and spoilers if you haven't seen the first movie, but it's about this uh, family that has this doll, and they call the doll Brahms. And Lauren Cohan is essentially a kind of like a uh, nanny person who goes to these rich people's houses, and she watches their kids while they go away. Well, they want these older people want her to watch this doll. And she's all like, okay. And now, there's two reasons why this premise works. One, she's a sit-in nanny. So, once she's at this place, she can't leave. So, right there, I enjoyed the setup of, you don't have the questions of why is she in this house and she's not leaving. And then the second thing is, um... The other thing that I liked and didn't like is the end of this film. But anyways, through the course of the movie, strange stuff starts happening. The doll is moving around, switches positions, and you're thinking it's Chucky scenario, right? Now, the end of the movie is that come to find out the people she was watching uh, the doll for, they had a son named Brom. The son killed the, his sister and has been living in the walls of the house, terrorizing the shit out of anyone who came into it. And the list that she guessed, because there's a list of rules for the doll, uh, basically the list that she guessed is really for the boy in the walls of the house. Now, why this is a problem in the first film is because the movie winds up contradicting itself because of certain scenes in the film don't make sense to someone being in the walls of the house. Like, the doll would move its head slightly. And I was saying, well, then did this guy come out of the walls just to move the doll's head and then run back in? Or the doll would switch positions? Uh, there were a few things that didn't make sense. So going into the sequel, I fully expected them because they said in the tagline, you'll hear the history of Brahms. So I fully expected them to address some of these issues I had in the first movie. <sighs> this movie, folks. <laughs> okay, so the setup is now this one stars Katie Holmes and a bunch of no-name actors. And Katie Holmes is the highlight. And I will give it to her. She is probably the saving grace of this movie. But the premise is interesting. Katie Holmes and her son are alone. The father travels away on some business. And during the beginning, there's a home invasion. And this traumatizes her son to where he doesn't talk. And Katie Holmes 
hits her head and she has concussions and sees things. Now, this could have been a way for the directors to explore the uh, mental stability of the family, like the son losing his mind and he's mute now so he can't talk, so the son struggling, Katie Holmes struggling with is what we're seeing with Brahms real or is it in her head a hallucination because she suffered this concussion, I assume. But the film sets up that premise and then doesn't address it. They wind up moving into the same house as the original and now you have the setup for the film. Now, here is my issue with this movie and one really glaring flaw with this film. The movie contradicts the first movie and contradicts its own movie. And what I mean by that is, when you get to the end of this film, the ending redcons the ending of the first film. And now, here's the hilarious part. It's by the same director. Now, when Brahms, or when The Boy, the original, came out, the director had literally no money to make this film. And it was a theatrical success. So they got a bigger budget and he retcons his own movie. <laughs> he destroys the this, this storyline from the first film. And he does something predictable and cliche on the second film. It's as if he fully expected the first film not to, not to be a success. So they end the first film where really it'd be difficult to make a sequel. And they make the second film and they retcon the first film. It's amazing. It's amazing. Not only that, but folks, this movie is boring. Not boring to the level of Prodigy. I, I was invested only in finding out about what Brahms is, which they very glaze over. They really give you not much as far as who Brahms is, but more of who the doll is. And by the time you get to it, it's so convoluted. And far-fetched that when you get to the end of this film, it completely contradicts its own film and it contradicts the original. So it's not really a sequel. It's as if the writers had no plan and they just shat a movie out and here you go. Uh, it, it's, it's a mess. <sighs> so what does Zod think? Zod does not approve. This movie is terrible. It is boring. It is contrived. It is a mess. And I'm going to give this movie a 5 out of 10. Now, why it makes the halfway point? Katie Holmes is actually really... Like, Katie Holmes is the only good thing about this film. Her performance as a struggling mother trying to deal with what's going on with her son and deal with what's going on with her was good until you get to the ending. And then they get rid of that whole plot of her dealing with stuff, and they don't really go back to her maybe hallucinating the doll is moving around and stuff like that. Stuff happens where you go, oh, okay, it's exactly what I expected. And it destroys the emotional impact of the family that they set up for, like, pretty much a majority of this movie. The boy is a good actor, the one who plays the little boy who can't talk. And uh, there's another actor in here who's pretty good, who's kind of just, uh, you have to see it. But anyways, overall, this movie is not that good. It's a terrible sequel. It probably will get a third movie because it's cheaply made. And it's surprisingly doing well in the box office. <sighs> I, I, I don't even know what to say. But anyways, I mean, it, it's a 5 out of 10. Zod does not approve. Uh, wait for this. If you're really curious, wait for this film to come out. Or to be streaming. And then I'd watch The Boy and The Boy 2. And see how they don't make sense. Because I literally watched The Boy before I went to see The Boy 2. Just to catch up. And it literally connects in no way, shape, or form. Except for the doll. So, 
Ah, uh, God. Anyways, in the comments below, let me know, have you seen The Boy 2, or Brahms, The Boy 2? Uh, if you liked the movie, let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. And also, let me know your favorite scary movie that involves a doll in the comments below. Anyways, this has been another fandom car review. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. As always, remember what the one and only rule here is in the fandom car. Kneel before your general, General Zod. Moit. I'm the bad guy. Duh.